But one of the things that, that, that I couldn't understand is whenever I asked somebody who'd been teaching this for 20, 30, 40 years, what are the three principles? They went stupid. <laughs> I mean, there's actually video of Dickon answering that question and starting and stopping and starting and stopping and going <laughs> And I'm thinking, guys, you named the field the three principles. You might want to prep that question. <laughs> but, but, but here's, here's what I've come to see. Here's how it looks to me now. The reason that people are so reticent to just answer that question is because of the incredible respect they have for this incredible gift that we have. And when you start to see that the principles are descriptions of something that is real, you don't want to make it sound like something you can write down on a piece of paper and tick off your research list. You want to try and do it justice somehow. You want to actually make sure that when you speak words about the principles, they're connected to this incredible, invisible truth about life. And so you do get a little inarticulate. Now sometimes what comes out after that is beautiful, and sometimes it just stays inarticulate. And the weird thing is, it doesn't seem to matter, right? I always tell coaches and teachers that we, we train in the principles that you have a secret weapon. You're telling the truth. You're pointing to something that's actually there. So even if you do a terrible job, there's a reasonable chance people will see it anyways, because it's really there. Right? So one of the principles is the principle of mind. Now, if we were gonna just do the dictionary definition, as it were, right? It's the energy and intelligence behind life. Well, for me, I, 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 I think of it as like the electricity that runs through us, that runs through everything, that powers the system, without which nothing would work. It's, it's the animating force that makes us alive. And it has an intelligence. Not an intelligence as in, mm, well, yes, you yes, see, the problem here is blah, 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 blah. Not an intellect, an intelligence. Acorns always become oak trees. Right? We can see it in nature. I saw a documentary once. I've never gotten over this. Animals queue up. They stand in line at a watering hole by species and wait their turn to drink water. Like, I don't know if these are just British animals or all animals. <laughs> but that blows my mind, right? There is an intelligence behind nature, and yet we blindly stumble forward as if that same intelligence does not guide us. And that's a mistake. It's an innocent mistake, but it's almost like we've got battery packs. And so because we're capable of running on battery power, we unplug, not seeing that we have a whole different level of functionality when we're plugged in than when we do when we're trying to run on our own batteries, on our own will, on our own intellect. So another principle, another gift that we have to guide us in our exploration is consciousness. Now consciousness, you'll notice if you just, you know, as a sort of a point of interest, if you're relatively new and you are still taking notes in your mind, right, you'll go, hmm, yes, people have, they, they, they talk about mind and, and that's a very quiet conversation, that one's nice. And they talk about thought endlessly, thought, 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 thought right? They go on about that for freaking ever, right? But everyone gets a little coy when it's time to talk about consciousness. It's like, oh, it's, um, you know, it's like awareness, kind of. Not really awareness, I, I don't know. Right? And so I, when, you know, when I came in, I really wanted to get it, because I was researching. I didn't know it, but I was researching the principles. I wasn't exploring them. And Sandy Crott, just dearest mentor, the most patient woman on earth, right? We were walking on a beach in Malibu, not far from here. 
And, and I was asking her, well, okay, so now what's thought? What's, and, and finally, like the 15th time I said, now, what's consciousness again? <laughs> she just looked at me, and I'm gonna say it wasn't discussed. <laughs> but she looked at me with a curious look in her eyes. And she said, why do you want to know? Now, that was a great question. Because I realized in that moment I was doing research. I realized I wanted to know. And I actually said, I'll give myself credit for this. I actually said, I want to know exactly what you mean by consciousness so I can decide whether or not I agree with you so I can decide whether or not to listen. <laughs> now, even I got that was a terrible strategy for learning something new. <laughs> right? I got, oh, OK. I want to explore this. I actually want a sense of what it is that's lighting these people up, that's guiding them, that's moving them, that's transforming their lives. I want that experience for myself. I, want, I, I can't do that with my head the way I was trying to do it. Well, consciousness is a way of talking about that within me which could see that I was being an idiot. It was that within me which, which could kind of catch wise to my own thinking, that could wake up from my own trance, that could wake up from my own thoughts. And the beautiful thing about that is it's built into the system. Right? You don't need an alarm clock for that. You wake up to yourself at deeper and deeper levels. You wake up to life at deeper and deeper levels. That's the gift of consciousness. Consciousness is doing the heavy lifting for us as we explore. And then there's thought. Right? And, and the only distinction that I, I always feel that it's, it's worth making about thought, because thought's the one where everyone goes, oh yeah, I got that one, is that we usually think about thought as if it's our thoughts about things that create our experience of life. Uh, if I had better thinking about death, if I had better thinking about my partner, if I had better thinking about the principles, that would change everything. No, it really wouldn't. It would be a little more pleasant for you. And nothing would be different at all. It's when you start to see that the thing itself is made of thought, that every Thing you can think about is in and of itself made of thought and therefore can change in a heartbeat. That's why somebody who experienced deep trauma can be over it literally in a heartbeat. That's why somebody voted least likely to ever give a talk on happiness can stand up here and not be full of shit. Right? That's why it really doesn't matter what's happened in the past. When you're looking for what's possible in the present and into the future, that's thought. And so those are, that's what we got, right? That's what we've got going for us. We have this intelligence that will guide us if we let it. We have this capacity to, to know, to wake up to ourselves more and more and more. And we have this incredible creative force it's always on, always creating our experience moment by moment. 